Good afternoon. <clears throat> Today is the 15th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Today we are called to hear Jesus' message and we are sent forth to proclaim the good news of the gospel. The celebrant of this Mass is Father O'Driscoll. The readings today begin with Numbers 971 in the Green Journey songbooks. The Mass is being offered for the repose of the souls of Luke Leonard, Robert Christie Jr., and Robert Christie Sr. Good afternoon. Please rise and join us in our entrance song, number 226 in the Colorful Spirit and Songbook, Our God is Here, number 226. For me, in justice, I shall behold your face. I shall be filled with the vision of your glory. Psalm 17, 15. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, Let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to call sinners to repentance and new life. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. The glory to God in the highest, the glory in excelsis Deo, can be found in the front cover 
of the Green Journey Songbook or for larger print on page 147. God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path. Give all who, for the faith they profess, are accounted Christians, the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ, and to strive after all that does it honor, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Amos. Amaziah, priest of Bethel, said to Amos, Off with you, visionary, flee to the land of Judah. There, earn your bread by prophesying, but never again prophesy in Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary, sanctuary in a royal temple. Amos answered Amaziah, I was no prophet, nor have I belonged to a company of prophets. I was a shepherd and a dresser of sycamores. The Lord took me from following the flock and said to me, Go prophesy to my sire my people, Israel, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. salvation to those who fear him glory dwelling in our land Lord let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation kindness and truth shall meet justice and peace shall kiss 
truth shall spring out of the earth and justice shall look down from heaven lord let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation the lord himself will give his benefits our land shall yield its increase justice shall walk before him and prepare the way of his steps lord let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual, spiritual blessing in the heavens, as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world to be holy and without blemish before him. In love he destined us for adoption to himself through Jesus Christ in accord with the favor of his will, for the praise of the glory of his grace that he granted us in the beloved. In him we have redemption by his blood, the forgiveness of transgressions, in accord with the riches of his grace that he lavished upon us. In all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will in accord with his favor, that he set forth in him as a plan for the fullness of times to sum up all things in Christ in heaven and on earth. In him we were also chosen, destined in accord with the purpose of the one who accomplishes all things according to the intention of his will. So that we might exist for the praise of his glory, we who first hoped in Christ. In him you also have, in him you also who have heard the word of the truth, the gospel of your salvation, and have believed in him, were sealed with the promise of the Holy Spirit, which is the first installment of our inheritance toward the redemption as God's possession to the praise of his glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus summoned the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over unclean spirits. He instructed them to take nothing for the journey but a walking stick, no food, no sack, no money in their belts. They were, however, to wear sandals, but not a second tunic. He said to them, wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave. Whatever place does not welcome you or listen to you, leave there and shake the dust off your feet in testimony against them. So they went off and preached repentance. 
The twelve drove out many demons, and they anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. The Gospel of the Lord. Jesus sent the apostles out, the twelve, two by two, I guess like the animals in the ark, to go out and proclaim the message, to deliver from unclean spirits. And he sent them out with great urgency. He said, take nothing for the journey but a walking stick. Now, in those days, you couldn't say, well, I'll have my credit card with me, and we'll just drop by to a 7-Eleven whenever we have any needs for any food or anything. No, people took stuff with them when they were going somewhere to take care of them, to provide for themselves. And he said, just go right out. And this is because this is a message of urgency. This is what you do if you were trying to warn people of something or trying to uh, give a great message of joy. And that's what this message is, a message of joy. That God is love. That death has been overcome in Christ. And that, yes, we have our struggles. But God, the eternal word incarnate, Jesus Christ, God, who's taken on himself the fullness of our nature and our, our fleshly reality, he's here with us, no matter what we go through. And so he said, if you go into a house, stay there until you leave. Well, of course, if you go into somewhere, you're going to stay there until you leave, because once you've left, you're not there, right? But... He's talking about not, you know, tra wandering around from place to place once you're in the, this particular village. He said, whatever place does not welcome you or listen to you, leave there and shake the dust off your feet in testimony against them. And that was a sign that you, you could take your sandals and clap them together and the dust would come out. And that was a sign that you were not living in this. You're not going to be a person of resentment. You're not going to say, well, what went wrong, and then beat yourself over and over because of, of problems or because of rejection. But go on. And that's not always an easy thing to do. When we've experienced rejection, when we've experienced hurt, when we've experienced all sorts of problems, even from within ourselves, even rejecting ourselves, that happens. But we're to go on. We're going to preach this, proclaim this. And this isn't just a calling for the 12 apostles and their successors. It is a calling, and they, above all, have that obligation to do this, and they have to. And if they're not, we have to make sure that they are, uh, giving us the fullness of the faith, whether it's a comfortable message or an uncomfortable message. And often the gospel message, the prophetic message, is uncomfortable. But we need that. We need to know the way of true justice. We need to know the way of standing up for, for life. We need to know the way of integrity of faith. And so they went out. And what did they preach? They preached repentance. Again, that uncomfortable message that brings such comfort once embraced. And they anointed people with oil who were sick and cured them. And we still have this in the sacrament of the sick. The Lord still occasionally, even miraculously, heals people with that. But the most important healing is that spiritual healing. Because the body, no matter how well we take care of us, ourselves, and I've just gone on a new phase of a diet, because I have to see the doctor in a couple weeks, and I gained weight instead of, he said, you know, lose this, and, well, I didn't lose it. <laughs> 
to know the power of spiritual healing because the spirit lives forever. And our bodies, yes, even will be raised up on the last day in that fullness. And Christ is there for us to wipe the tears from every eye. May the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ enlighten the eyes of our hearts that we may know what is the hope that belongs to our call. We had in the Alleluia verse from Ephesians 1, 17 and 18. Underlining what St. Paul is telling us today, not just then 2,000 years ago, but today as he addressed the Ephesians in the first chapter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavens. And you may say, well, I don't feel particularly blessed right now, especially not with everything, but the whole body of Christ has this blessing. There in the church, there are those who have this spiritual blessing, and we can avail ourselves of that. And he is promising that to us, a promise he will not break, unless, of course, we decide to break it. As he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, so God knew you, knew you in all eternity, before ever you were a slapped in the hospital and cried out long before that in eternity and loved you in that eternity and chose you in eternity to be what to be holy and without blemish before him and I don't know about you but I don't know I'm not if I'm particularly without blemish so we really need to take what they say in AA a fearless moral inventory of ourselves. But to always do that in love and in acceptance of us, the acceptance that God has for us as we commit ourselves to this way of repentance, this joyful repentance. And you might say, well, I don't find repentance all that joyful. Well, the more we look at Jesus, the more we open ourselves to the power of the Holy Spirit, the more we know God the unbegotten as our true father who has adopted us. And St. Paul points that out. In love, he destined us for adoption to himself through Jesus Christ in accord with the grace of his will for the praise of the glory of God's grace that he granted us, the beloved. You are among the beloved. All of us are. And so we're called, like the apostles, to go forth and bring the message of Jesus to others, to bring Jesus to others and others to Jesus in our way, beginning with ourselves. For Jesus is there with his arms open to each one of us to embrace us, to wipe away every tear from every eye. In him, we have redemption by his blood. So it's by God's coming in, taking our nature and even dying for us. We don't have to pull ourselves up by our bootstraps. He is there for us as our help, as our savior. He is the one who brought us forth for salvation by grace through faith, a faith that works through love. The forgiveness of transgressions, of sin, in the power that he has, in accord with the riches of his grace, that he just drops out a little drop at a time and say, well, let me measure this out, let me pull the scale out and see if... No, he lavishes upon us. He pours out his grace on us. In all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will in accord with his favor. And what is the depth of the mystery of his will? That we be united with him. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. That mystery of his will in accord with his favor, that he set forth in him, in Christ, God incarnate, 
as a plan for the fullness of time, to sum up all things in Christ, that we were all brought together in Christ, the whole Christ, that image of St. Paul, the body of Christ, all brought together unto Christ the head, in heaven and on earth. And we might say, well, I'm not somebody who's particularly feel chosen. In him we were chosen, destined in accord with the purpose of the one. We may not feel like that. Well, I don't think Amos felt that way either. But he went off to the northern kingdom to proclaim the calling to justice, the calling to faithfulness to the covenant. And the priests there in the, the temple in the northern kingdom, they had more than one. They didn't want, with the split of the two kingdoms, they didn't want people going down to Jerusalem and, and uh, going to that temple, enhancing the power of the king of Judah. No, they wanted the north there. So they had two convenient temples there. Bethel, which you might remember from the dream of Jacob there, seeing angels coming and going there. But he doesn't like this message of Amos, this message of repentance, this message uh, that shakes things up. And he said, get lost. Well, actually, that's a paraphrase of what he said. Off with you, visionary. Flee to the land of Judah, the place you came from. There, you know, you can get, you can earn your wages as a prophet there, but not here. You're not licensed here for us. Never again prophesy in Bethel, for this is the king's sanctuary and a royal temple. He doesn't say, oh, this is God's house. This is the place of God. He said, oh, no, our authority is from the state, is from the king. No, the authority of the prophet is from God. And he said, I'm, I'm not a prophet. I didn't graduate from a prophet school. I don't belong to a group of prophets. I wasn't trained in all this. He said, I'm a sh I was a shepherd. And often these people look down on shepherds. And even more, a dresser of sycamores, which is a rather strange thing to us. And I remember someone told me what a dresser of sycamore actually did. He used to go to sycamore trees and stick a pointed stick into the fruit so that if there were any bugs that had been inside, you know, when, in, 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 so that they could come out the hole rather than eat their way through and destroy the sycamore fruit. Not exactly something you need a PhD for. Although I don't think I'd know a sycamore from a pine tree. But. He said, the Lord took me from following the flock and said to me, go, prophesy to my people Israel. And the Lord is saying that to us also in our whatever circumstance we're in. We may not be sent off to some far place, but we are called to stand up for the faith where we are and to stand up to the faith maybe against people in power in the church even who aren't proclaiming the fullness of the faith because the faith isn't a cafeteria meal, picking what you like. It's a sit-down meal, the supper of the lamb. It's a whole thing. And we are called to be people who are bringing the Lord to others and others to the Lord. Go prophesy to my people. And let us stand to proclaim our faith in the words of Nicene Creed found in the inner front cover of the green book or for larger print at, on number 148. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary 
and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With confidence in the mercy of the Lord as he comes toward each one of us, as we stumble along, the Lord Jesus is there to support us. Let us pray not only for our needs, but for the needs of the whole world and church, especially for all those who are suffering. Lord, our creator, bless and give peace to all who struggle with their sexual identity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. Dear Father, thanks you for your, thank you for your aiding scientists in controlling the coronavirus. May your providence provide enough vaccine to protect all the people on the earth. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. Father, you teach us that every human being is of immortal value in your eyes. Protect the unborn, the elderly, those facing terror, disease, or disaster. Protect our military wherever they serve. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. Heavenly Father, now that the pandemic has eased up, move all of us, your people, to take up our obligation of offering you our regular Sunday worship. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. Father, heal the sick, particularly those whose names are in our book of prayer intentions, and especially Joseph Lamb, Mia Ann Costa, Baby Walter, Jim Cassidy, Susan Albrecht, Donna Downey, Taylor Foscaldi, Danny Higgins, Robert Brigham, Debbie Howard, Joanne Noyes, Dennis Workheiser, Jenna Callahan, Dennis DeGiusto, Joanne Plan, and all suffering from the coronavirus. Virus. Lift their spirits, heal them, and give them peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Father, Christ is the salvation of all who die in him. In him. <clears throat> Grant eternal rest to Jane Duggan, Sandra Dowdle, Alice Korzeniowski, Adam Thomas Whalen, and Luke Lennon, Robert Christie Sr. and Robert Christie Jr., all for whom <clears throat> this Mass is being offered, and all the souls of those who have died from the coronavirus, virus, as well as our military who have died serving our country. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. <clears throat> Be present to your family, O Lord, we pray, and graciously ensure that those you have endowed with the grace of faith may come always to live in fidelity to that faith and live as true people adopted by your grace and be co-heirs by the saving death and resurrection of your only begotten Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please join with us in singing our presentation song, number 324 in the Spirit and Songbook, Make Your Home in Me, number 324. <laughs> Thank you. 
brothers and sisters that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father may the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good in the good of all his holy church look upon the offerings of the church O Lord as she makes her prayer to you and grant that when consumed by those who believe they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. For out of compassion for the way witness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Eucharistic prayer too. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Sean, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servants, Luke Leonard, Robert Christie Sr., and Robert Christie Jr., whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they who are united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The communion antiphons. The sparrow finds a home and the swallow a nest for her young. By your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God, blessed are they who dwell in your house, forever singing your praise. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him, says the Lord. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. We are with us in singing our communion song. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. My chains are gone. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amazing body grace, how sweet the sound body of that saved a wretch like me. Body I once was lost, body but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. is burned. 
the earth shall soon dissolve like snow. Body of Christ. The sun forbear to shine. Body of Christ. But God who called me here below. Body of Christ. Will be Let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. God. But before you go, we have a few announcements. <laughs> so we now have the 7.30 a.m. Mass on Sunday, as well as this Mass at 4 p.m. on Saturday, and the 10 a.m. Mass on Sunday but the, uh, the twin mass downstairs at 10, downstairs in Mary's Chapel, uh, has been continued now that we don't need the spacing as much. 
And also down to the Daloa Church, Mary's Chapel, will be open for prayer Monday through Friday from 8.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. and on Saturdays from 8.30 a.m. to 8.30 p.m. Confessions will still be at St. Joseph's Center on Saturdays from 3 to 3.45 p.m. <clears throat> Funerals will be at 9 a.m. Monday through Saturday with no limits on seating and only unvaccinated people need to wear masks. And we will continue to video the 4 p.m. mass on Saturday and show it online and at WRPS cable. And our thanks for the services of so many people, our music people, our welcoming team for the masses, our lectors and lay ministers of distribution of the Holy Eucharist, and uh, Keith Davis and Chris, Chris Bernica for placing our liturgies on cable and on our website. Please join with us in singing our recessional, number 320 in the Spirit and Songbook, In Christ Alone, number 320. <laughs> alone my hope is found he is my light my strength my song this cornerstone this solid ground fears from the fiercest drought and storm what heights of God what depths of peace when fears are still when striving cease my comfort the grave he rose again and as he stands in victory since curse has lost its grip on me for i am here 